This is Hidden Killers Week in Review. A look back at the most prolific stories of the week. You're listening to the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruschi. Featuring clinical and forensic psychologist Joni Johnston. We just heard the story of Harmony Montgomery, the Audrey Cunningham story. Another one that raises so many eyebrows and reaches so many hearts. Another little girl whose life taken far too early at the hands of a horrible, horrible human being. Audrey Cunningham, that little girl, 11 years old, killed by a monster living on the very property where she lived because mom and dad said, hey, uh, we're doing the godly thing. We're doing what we believe is in our faith and giving people a second chance. And how are we to know that this was a sex offender, that this is a, a convicted felon? We couldn't look that up. We couldn't find that. Never mind the way the man looked to begin with. They were trying to do the right thing. And in the end, their daughter was murdered. Joining me to discuss, Dr. Joni Johnson, forensic psychologist. Uh, this is a, a case where I'm looking at it and it feels like there's a lot more going on here than meets the eye. I know the parents just uh, released that statement saying we, you know, we had no idea that this could have happened. Uh, we didn't know about his past, but I mean... I don't know. There, there, there seems to be a lot of uh, a lot of gray area here. Because there seems like the, the the writing was on the wall when you decide to let this guy stay in the trailer behind your house. You know, I have to say, Tony, I just want to be. This is my me personally. Mm -hmm. I want to be very slow to criticize these parents because okay. I don't know. You know the circumstances mm -hmm. in terms of you know how long they knew this person before he came to live with them. What well, I mean, you know. These parents have paid the ultimate consequence, right? Yeah. The ultimate sacrifice. So if they made an error in judgment, I mean, it, it's then nobody is going to suffer yeah. like they are going to suffer yeah. for, for making that decision. And so that is just absolutely heartbreaking to me to think about that. Now, you know, a lot of more things may come out. We may know that they have a different kind of relationship or whatever. But until then... You know, I just feel like that, you know, there just doesn't need to be any criticism levied at these parents because of what they're going through already. On the other hand, you know, I have to say when I first heard that, you know, they weren't that he wasn't on the sex offender registry. Um, this is obviously in a different state than California, which is where I live. But I, I didn't even believe that. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. um, and I was really astonished to see that somebody who's convicted of enticing a child, you know, gets in prison for two years and is not required to register. And so, I mean, uh, sadly, I'm afraid that, we're, you know, I mean, I mean, sadly and gladly at the same time, sadly, because a child died and, you know, gladly, this may be yet another law that gets passed in an attempt to protect children. Meaning, you know, I, I have a feeling we're going to see Audrey's law, which now requires individuals who are convicted of enticing a child to register because there absolutely should have been some some way that he was well, on it, some kind of database. And, and that's the argument that's being brought out. And I've been trying to find, you know, okay, because there's a loophole in the law is, is what's being stated by the family that, that allowed him not to register uh, as a sex offender. How is that? I mean, if, if you've been charged, you've been convicted of these crimes, what is this loophole that allow? I mean, is, is this state by state where some states have a, a place where because you're not reaching this level of being a sex offender that you don't have to register or, or, or what is, what are we talking about here exactly that, that this I loophole think, is? I'm sorry. Tony, I think there is some variability in terms from, from state to state. Um, I'm not that familiar with if there, I think there's, I'm pretty sure there's a, there's state by state mm -hmm. uh, sex offender registries. that have different laws about that, but I went to try to understand this myself because mm -hmm. I was like you, I was kind of puzzled by this. And what was the, the most difficult thing for me to wrap my head around was the enticement charge apparently uh, was levied and he was convicted only because his victim got away, was able to get away from him. So in other words, you know, it wasn't like this guy did a lesser offense mm -hmm. or he was trying to do a bigger offense. He was trying to sexually assault this 10 year old girl who's, yeah. who's spoken out since then. And she, by her own wits, was able to to escape him. And that I think is what's mind boggling, how there could be a loophole that allowed for that, it, it, you know, is beyond me. So it, I don't know, I don't understand yeah. why that would be the case, but I'm thinking, okay, you're, you're saying that, you know, clearly if he had been, in, I'm putting this in very big quotation marks, successful yeah. in what he was trying to do, of course he would have been on a sex offender registry. So there's got to be some 
you know, reasoning yeah. for why this person, again, because he had a, a victim who was able to get away, is not, a, you know, does not require to be on the sex offender registry. I have a very, I guess I said earlier, I, I cannot believe that that is not going to change. Well, it's like the law almost enables it. Like, well, if you didn't uh, succeed, and again, big air quotes, succeed first time, Try again because you're not uh, on the registry. I mean, that's really how this would read to some horrible human being like this. And obviously he did try again because he wasn't on that list. I, I, I don't know that it's a huge problem that people are just taking in individuals and putting them in the trailers in their backyards on good faith uh, or because they believe it's it's the the right thing to do because that's what uh, their their religion tells them to but gosh and, and I'm not trying to attack the parents here but but gosh uh I mean there there had to have been some red flags here I mean what what does this say just in general about sometimes people's goodwill uh and and the horrible things that can happen if you're kind of blindly going into it strictly on faith well, and I think that is a good point. I mean, you know, there's the old saying, trust but verify, right? Yeah. Which just means that certainly, you know, it is very important. I mean, I'm all for giving people second chances. Sure. I've seen people be given second chances and be very successful. I think when you have children involved, um, I think that you, you know, that certainly does beg for a greater level of caution. Yeah. And, and perhaps supervision. Uh, and it also means that you're right. We need to, you know, proceed with caution and not necessarily follow the kind of the old rule of I'll trust you to give me a reason not to, mm -hmm. but almost like I'm not going to trust you until over time you give me a reason to. So I think that, you know, faith and second chances are fantastic as long as they're cautioned with, you know, with investigation and with, with some, you know, some safeguards in place. Yeah. Like just using your mind. I mean, I, 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 I hear when I hear the arguments and I'm not anti-religion or anti-faith or anything, but I'm, I, it's like, if we're going down that road, he also gave you a brain to use. And maybe the man who has the Nazi apparel and, and the, the tattoos all over his body connected to the Aryan Brotherhood might not be the best person to have around your, your property with small children. Um, mm -hmm. I, I would just think that that, I don't know, it, it's easy to look at this and judge it from the outside with a lot of anger because a little girl is dead. Like you said, these people have paid the ultimate price. But my goodness, it's hard not to just shake your head and go, how did you not see this coming? Yeah, it, it is hard because we're all angry yeah. that, an, that an 11 year old girl, precious little girl, whose life is lost for, for nothing. Yeah. Want to listen ad free? Want advanced access to all of our interviews before anyone else? Become a True Crime Today Premium Plus subscriber on Apple Podcasts. You get every episode commercial free. So you can binge on True Crime. Until you can binge no more. Search True Crime Today Premium Plus on Apple Podcasts now. Or go to our podcast page and sign up now. More of the Hidden Killers podcast next.